Welcome everyone to Depression to Expression. My name is Scott and, you know, you thought you knew everything about anxiety, right? You've been reading articles, you've been watching YouTube vids, but I guarantee these unconventional ways of dealing with it will shock you, but in a good way. I really hope this video is helpful to you. There's going to be some things that you already know. There's going to be some things that are going to amaze you. You're going to try and see if it works for you. That's what this channel is. Let's list out and lay out a bunch of things that have been proven to help people and see what works, see what doesn't work. Throw the stuff out that doesn't work, work on the things that do, tweak it to your liking and make it personalized for your recovery. All right. So thanks for joining me today. Again, this is Scott from Depression to Expression. If you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Best mental health channel on YouTube, best community best humans. The best humans are here from all over the world. You know, there are no borders when it comes to uh, struggling with mental health problems and mental illness. All right. It doesn't matter where you're from. We all go through stuff. Life's extremely difficult, but hopefully this video will put a smile on your face and give you some tools for your mental health toolbox. So are you ready? Okay. We're going to have sound effects in the video. We're going to have jokes. We're going to have videos on the right hand side. We're going to split this video up in two ways. Okay. How to deal with the anxiety symptoms. That's going to be about half of the 10 tips. The other half are going to be ones that will increase your resilience and uh, ability to deal with anxiety in the long term. Okay. So they may not have a huge impact right now in the moment, but for long term, for dealing with it and, and getting rid of, you know, the debilitating anxiety at times, being able to really let it have a, a less of, um, less of an impact on your life. That's what the last few are going to be. Okay. And I'd really recommend, uh, watching and, and learning about all 10 here because each and every one of them is so crucial, um, to mental health in my experience and the hundreds and hundreds of people that I've talked to and personal testimony from everyone who's emailed me and messaged me over the past five years on YouTube. This is the collection of goodies that, that I've taken away from that. So I hope you enjoy these. Here's 10, but let me tell you, we could do a list of a million because everyone is different. I used to know a guy who used to pet squirrels to calm his anxiety. I knew a guy who used to feed the duckies at the local pond that really calmed down his symptoms. I used to know a woman who used to make her own scarves. I used to know a guy who used to smell his own farts to calm down his anxiety, all right? Whatever works for you, that's what you got to do. Now, I know you might be thinking, Scott, get on with the damn video. You're making me anxious. Well, Let's take, let's take a breath. I want to play you a little something from this uh, Native American flute. It's made of walnut or chestnut. Anyways, it's beautiful. Some kind of wood. You know, this could even be on the list if you're looking to uh, to calm your nerves sometimes and uh, just kind of settle in that present moment. Helps playing and, and you, you focusing on the breath at the same time with this thing. I think we're ready to jump into the 10 tips, the 10 ways, the 10 zippity doo da dickity day does how to deal with anxiety. Now, you know, these are going to uh, resonate with a lot of you, whether you have extreme anxiety or just, um, you know, let's call it nervousness or jitteries or not a, an official diagnosis here. OK, this is really for everyone. And I hope you do enjoy. Let's get started. The first tip we have here is my favorite dynamic meditation. Now, if you watch the video here, you're probably thinking, well, it's a mental health channel. So maybe this person's a nut. 
okay? Or maybe they're having some kind of seizure. But no, this is what dynamic meditation is, and the link is below for you to learn more and access this video. I've talked about it a bunch on the channel. It's how I deal with anxiety personally and how I deal uh, with deep depression if I do have the energy to get up and move the body, okay? It is so crucial to use the body. Use your body to your advantage, okay? It's not just a lump of flesh, okay? Mind and body are exactly the same, completely connected. I want you to realize that. And what this person's doing here is shaking it out. You vibrate the anxiety out. Anxiety is very nervous energy, and we need to express that. That's depression to expression in a nutshell. Feeling depressed? Express it. Feeling anxious? express it okay there are a lot of different ways to do that dynamic meditation please look into this please if you have not tried this it's it's number one for a reason because if you don't watch the full video i really wanted you to see this one first okay this has saved my life all right so that's number one number two cbt now what do you know what cbt stands for and no it doesn't stand for uh coke bears and tranquilizers it stands for cognitive behavioral therapy, all right? And we've done thought records on the channel here. Here's a picture of what a thought record looks like, okay? And we've also talked on the channel with the video, What is Mental Health? It's how our thoughts affect our feelings and how our feelings affect our behaviors. And cognitive behavioral therapy does that, okay? You dissect your thoughts. You notice how a feeling can start with a thought. You have the thought first, and that thought can make you feel anxious, all right? So it's diving into that. And you can do CBT on your own with this thought record right here. And this is available in the description below, all right? You can download that for free and, and print it out. I love writing um, writing with these with, with a pen or pencil rather than on the computer. It's a little more expressive. Um, so please feel free to do that. CBT, this is like uh, psychology 101 with dealing with anxiety and, and unwanted and unhelpful thoughts, okay? This is just the icing on the cake. You, you have to spend six years being a psychologist and then this is like the gravy baby, all right? So please look into CBT. This has helped me tremendously going to therapy, learning how to do the thought records on my own. It is just a, a blast, uh, blast as in not necessarily fun, but you do realize how connected you are to your thinking and it helps you separate that. All right. It helps you separate yourself from your thoughts. That's, that's what it's all about. And you end up not taking them that seriously. Number three. Now you've heard this one before and please believe me that it is true. It has been proven time and time again. And you gotta, you gotta look at the facties and a facty is just a fact, all right? Just a little um, cool lingo. That's what the kids are saying these days. I was born in 1989, but I'm still hip. They're listening to Sugar Ray. They're listening to 98 Degrees. They're listening to Backstreet Boys and uh, Maroon 5. I know what the kids are doing these days. I'm up with it. So, uh, you know, don't tell me what's cool, okay? Now with exercise, guys, there have been so many studies on exercise and depression, exercise on mental health. And studies still come out. And the headline is like, you know, new study proves or new study shows that exercise is helpful for depression. Like, let's set the record straight. We know. We know. Okay? We know. But the, the hard part is getting yourself to do it. Especially with depression, it's tough. But with anxiety, if you have that nervous energy, okay, you know what anxiety feels like. You can't sleep it off, guys. Sometimes it might feel right, but really, just with dynamic meditation, use your body. Use it. Shake it out. Even if it's like this, man, even if it's squeezing something, even if it's getting my uh, elastic bands here and doing some pulls, just a push-up here and there. If you literally do five push-ups, ten push-ups, if you can't do a push-up, do the knee ones, right? Go up against the wall and do a push-up. So, you know, not a lot of arm strength required. I guarantee you, you will feel better. Now, I'm not saying 100% better or 50% better, but you will see improvement. You will feel a little bit of relief. It's, it, it's so simple. I don't need to get into the science because, A, I don't know a lot of the science, okay? I couldn't tell you, right, to be honest. I'm reading a book on it called Spark. I, uh, I finished it, but I'm reviewing 
and want to do a separate video on exercise and depression, but honestly, j just think about it, you know, with common sense. All right, you're nervous, you have nervous energy, you feel like you're gonna explode, you're sweating, right? The world's closing in around you, right? You feel smaller, you gotta, you have to express it, man. You have to. Because then you get apathetic and you, and you get closed off and you even get depressed if you hold in this anxiety. It's bottling it up. You have to express it. Pop the cork and celebrate, all right? Celebrate your anxiety a little bit, all right? Now remember, these are the tips to deal with the symptoms. So, so far we have dynamic meditation, CBT, which could be actually both, kind of changing that plasticity of the brain, but also exercise. And now number four, we have medication. Mmm. Now I know what you're thinking. Scott, medication, it's full of chemicals. Chemicals are bad. This is what people who don't know anything about science, engineering, chemistry, biology, they use, the, they use the word chemicals. There's chemicals in that. Chemicals are bad. Like, what are you saying, dude? I want to put up a post here that I shared on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube in the uh, community section. And I think it's awesome. It's like people want to go all natural. Like, what does natural even mean to you, okay? What do you mean by natural? Well, are you taking vitamins? Well, vitamins are made in a factory too. In this, it's, in this post, it's hilarious. Like, yeah, natural would be us still uh, being hunter-gatherers, taking shits in fields, and uh, if we lived in cities, no adequate sewage, um, clean drinking water, right? We couldn't live in half of the places we do, right? You know how much water we divert? Hollywood and LA shouldn't even exist. The place was a damn desert. They diverted so much water to get it to the city. Like, it's absolutely incredible what we've done to the world in a very cool way. Um, nothing's natural anymore, okay? If you want natural, go lie in your shit and be in pain all day. That's what I'm saying, all right? So when we talk about antidepressants, all right? I'm not like pro antidepressants. No one likes to take medication, guys. When it comes to anxiety disorders, medication can be extremely effective for a lot of people, okay? Um, that's the reality, okay? So it's not everyone's first option. You wanna try everything you can before you have to get medication just from cost savings alone. Of course, you'd rather see if a jog works or thought records work or dynamic meditation works before you start spending money on medication. Hey, I'm a, I'm a cheap guy, that's what I would look at. But once you try everything and, and things still aren't effective, Medication can do wonders, and there's plenty of testimony from people all over the world where medication has helped a lot, okay? There are also those side effects. Um, I won't get into that. I'm not a licensed physician, but uh, it, it's something to definitely look at when dealing with anxiety. Now, we're on number five. This, again, can relate both ways to dealing with the symptoms of anxiety and, uh, and, uh, and, and, um, and, uh, Holy crap. <laughs> oh my God. Dealing with the symptoms of anxiety and um, having the effects of decreased anxiety last long term. Okay, that's, that's kind of the name of the game. You can do these things to relieve symptoms and you can keep doing them for the rest of your life. That's why they're in the toolbox. But the rest of these things that I'm going to talk about are things that, um, that require a plan. That, that you know you need to dig pretty deep and it's not a, a quick fix. So number five is diet. If you haven't watched this video with Michaela Peterson, please uh, check out the the, um, the the cards right here. If you click that that button right up there by my head, um, she only eats beef. She did so much diet experimentation. She had uh, suffered with autoimmune disorder. Um, she had to have her hip replaced. She had terrible arthritis. She suffered from uh, major depressive disorder, like majorly depressed. She was not doing well. She experimented so much with her diet, which is in the video if you want to take a look, and uh, she does not need to take any medication anymore. Now, I'm not saying that's the story for everyone. Of course it's not, okay? But she, she only eats beef. Isn't that incredible, okay? She only eats beef. She's never felt better in her entire life. And there are stories with the zero-carb diets and all types of stuff, what you can do for your mental health and physical health um, with diet. It's so huge. So if, say, you're anxious and uh, I ask you, well, what would you have for lunch? You're like, well, I had, uh, you know, a bag of Sour Patch Kids. They're delicious, but, you know, that probably wouldn't help with all that refined sugar. And then I had uh, Coca-Cola and then a peanut butter and jam sandwich. And, um, and then I washed it down with some crab cakes. It's like that's not 
the best. More and more studies are coming out where it's saying, you know, refined sugar. We can see that it's definitely not great, A, for weight gain, but for anxiety as well. Having these huge insulin spikes and blood sugar spikes, right? Causing you to have that huge rush of energy and then a huge crash, right? This, we want our mood to stabilize and food has so much to do with this. So I'd really recommend you watching uh, the video with Michaela Peterson, but also look into different diets. See if there's foods uh, for you that are triggers that might cause you to feel terrible, all right? Look at alcohol. How do you feel after you drink alcohol? Do you get more anxious, less anxious? I'm talking about the night, or sorry, the morning after. While you're drinking, your anxiety most likely decreases, right? It's, alcohol is a great thing for that. How do you feel the day after, all right? If you eat a few Twinkies, how do you feel a few hours after, right? N note these things. Check out your diet and really look into it, how it's affecting your mood. Number six. Talk about it. Talk about it. Seems simple. And I know the word stigma is just plastered everywhere you go. And it seems like it's impossible to talk about it because there is this stigma. But just tell yourself there is no stigma and go get some help. More on, more on this in other videos, okay? But we're going to keep it real simple here. When you do decide to talk to someone, that's the best relief I've ever felt. Now, when I'm saying talk about it, this can be with a therapist, a counselor, okay? There's uh, my sponsor on this channel is BetterHelp, and it's online therapy. So if you don't feel comfortable talking to someone um, in person, there's online chats, there's Skype. This is what BetterHelp is, um, kind of IMing on your computer. I've used it before. It's awesome. So the link's in the description if you want to try that out. But talking about it can also just be with a friend, with your, pa with your mom, with your dad, right? Um, siblings. Someone online, chat forums, anyone. When I feel anxious, all right, even before I did a video on this years ago, it's like I could feel a panic attack coming on. I, the feeling of anxiety is just so terrible. You all know what I mean. And just the thought, the thought that I was with a friend, the thought that I was comfortable enough to tell this person that I was anxious, that I was feeling anxious and I may have a panic attack, I feel something coming. Just that thought and that option of being able to say something, being able to talk about it, symptom gone. Symptoms, plural. Not gone, but extremely reduced. So it's having that option, that freedom to be able to talk about it, to know you can talk about it with someone if you feel the need to. That is just such a freeing feeling. It's like you can have your mental health toolbox and you can have a million things in there. You don't have to use them. You never have to use them. But the thought of you having a lot of options to make yourself feel better, sometimes is that thought is all you need. Saying, okay, if this happens, well, I have this whole list of things I can try if I ever feel terrible. That thought is amazing. It's a very reassuring, comforting thought. So just the thought of talking to someone is awesome, but literally, if you do have someone you can talk to, okay? Online, parent, sibling, friend, teacher, priest, counselor, anyone, please do yourself a favor and express those emotions, express how you're feeling. I guarantee you'll feel better. Number seven, now after this one, uh, they're going to be ones that deal with anxiety in the long term, but this one can as well, and that is meditation. Meditation, we know how plastic the brain is. We know how it can change over time and how we actually have control over that, right? So with meditation, guys, I do meditation Monday. I should say we. Meditation Monday every Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You just come to the YouTube channel, depression to expression youtube.com slash depression to expression and uh, we do a live stream meditation. You sit there, I guide you through it. it takes about 10, 15 minutes at times. It'll be awesome if you join us, okay? But meditation for me, I've been meditating and practicing mindfulness uh, for 10 years. And let's say meditation and mindfulness will go together for this tip. Um, with anxiety, right, in, in, the, in the present moment, you feel those symptoms in your body. You know, you've almost never been so present when you feel anxious, okay? But there's a thought that may get you there. There's, there's internal workings at play, whether it be subconscious or conscious. But 
what, what mindfulness and meditation does is remove yourself from taking thoughts too seriously at times, right? We say it's just a thought or we notice, okay, we're just thinking. That's, that thought's not me. That's irrelevant. That's not useful. That means nothing, right? It's, it's detaching yourself from that, coming back to bodily sensations, coming back to the breath, right? The breath is very important when dealing with anxiety. Notice how it shortens. Notice how when you're anxious, it's like your lung capacity is almost at, you know, 50%. You can take deep breaths, come back to the body, right? And noticing what anxiety feels like. And it's a, it's a scary feeling, okay? It can be scary, but part of it is, is um, again, detaching yourself from thoughts, but also realizing that, you know, what's happening in your body can be noticed and can be observed. Rather, and right when you observe it, right when you have control over the observation and say, hey, this is the way I'm feeling right now, that gives you control. That gives you a bit of power over it. Now, I know, I know if someone told me that and I was like, I deal with, you know, I've dealt with extreme anxiety. If someone told me that, hey, man, just notice the feeling, you know, mindfulness, I'd be like, shut up, man. You're full of garbage. That is complete trash. And I know how it sounds. And at the beginning, are you kidding me? Hey, 10 years and I'm working at it. 10 years and I'm still working hard. And at times it doesn't work at all. Are you kidding me? I need to do the dynamic meditation. I need to express myself more than doing the mindfulness approach. Okay. But, but you know, you will get better at it. I promise. So I'm not saying this is a mindfulness is a fix all and it'll get rid of everything. In fact, no, being mindful, the, the emotions won't go away. They'll stay there, but you're noticing them in a different way. All right. So number seven is meditation and mindfulness. All right. It's worked wonders for me. It actually has, um, and uh, I'll put the links, all the links are below for Meditation Monday and all the different playlists, and there's a bunch of guided meditations I've done as well, so feel free to check those out in the description. Okay, now here's where we're going to get into the little nitty gritty and how this, out of all things I've mentioned, dynamic meditation was huge, but this is where... Um, this is where you have the confidence and the ability to deal with anxiety when it does come. All right. It doesn't, it doesn't break you anymore. You sway a bit, but it doesn't break you. And because when you have trust in yourself, right, when you have confidence in your abilities and you know what's in your mental health toolbox and you know how to use those tools correctly, right? You know the problem, okay? You know, using a hammer to uh, screw in a screw, it's not going to work well, okay? So you know what tool to use to help and fix the specific problem. These, these tools right here, this one that I'm about to mention was huge for me. So here we go. You're ready. This is number eight, right? This is number eight. It's create a set of values. That's right. Uh, this deserves its own video and, and you know, there's going to be one coming up. But this was the biggest thing. Now, whether you're, uh, you follow any type of uh, religion or religious person, spiritual person, that's the new uh, word today. You're not religious, you're spiritual. Um, whatever that means. Eh. But what, what are your set of values in that religion or, or what you follow? Okay, probably hey, Ten Commandments. Don't kill anybody. Uh, be nice to your neighbor. The golden rule, right? Don't sleep with your buddy's wife. All of these things are very important. But... What are your specific set of values? Like, go deeper than that, okay? You know you shouldn't murder, okay? You know you shouldn't murder. I'm going to give you some of mine. And this is in the Depression to Expression mission statement. Create an honest dialogue about mental health while educating and inspiring people to express themselves freely with confidence, right? So, honesty is what I value. Honesty is what I value. That is why... If anxiety comes after me and anxiety's on my shoulder, it's like, yo, buddy, I'm going to attack you soon. How you doing, man? I think it's ready. You haven't had a panic attack in a while. And you know what? Life is getting pretty difficult. Eh? So I, I think you're ready for me. I think you're ready. Well, the way I see it is I value honesty. 
and I'm honest with myself, and I'm honest with other people. So if I'm in public, if I'm with family, if I'm with friends, if I'm anywhere, anywhere at all, with strangers, with people I know, it doesn't matter. I truly value honesty. I like when other people are honest with me, right? That's what I value, so I'm going to be honest with them. So remember that thought about telling someone about a panic attack. I have no problem with that because I value with all of my heart. I live for this honest dialogue, right? I live for this no bullshit approach. So what am I going to do? I'm going to tell people how I feel if that's going to help. I'm going to be honest with other people. And that's, that helps me so much with anxiety, right? If I need to step out of a room, it doesn't matter where I am. I really don't care. I've done this in meetings, huge corporations. I'd say, hey, I'm feeling like really anxious right now. I just got to step out. Sorry about that. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Fire me for being anxious? Well, that's not the best job to work. That's not the best job to have if someone fires you for being anxious, right? So listen, have and create a set of values. What do you value in other people? Who's someone you admire? What set of values do they have? Are they, you know, do they show great integrity? Are they very open people? Are they honest people? What do they value? What do they live for? What are you living for? What do you want to see more of in this world? And how are you going to project that to the world, right? So for me, it's honesty. And when I'm honest and I truly believe in honesty, anxiety can't touch me, man. Sure, the symptoms may be there, but I'm going to be honest with myself and other people. And it's a tool in my toolbox. Done. Number eight. This one is a little strange, okay? Because, um, because anxiety is about the future. The future is unknown and it's dealing with that unknown. It's like an existential thing, man. To deal with the unknown is, uh, you know, if you sit and think about it long enough, your brain's just going to spin and I guarantee you, you won't get anywhere. You're going to come back to right where you started. Um, to deal with the unknown is extremely difficult and it takes, um, it takes some practice to get comfortable with that. And obviously no one is comfortable. No one is comfortable with the notion of death or very few, I'd say, you know, if you truly believe in Catholicism and you truly believe in uh, reincarnation or, you know, going to heaven and seeing all your friends, well, death may be pretty okay. Uh, but for a lot of us, the future is unknown. The thoughts of, you know, death and, and, and what we don't know is terrifying. So number eight here is plan your future, which may seem strange because no matter how much you plan, there's always going to be unknowns. It's like, remember in elementary school or high school, people were like, so where do you want to be in 10 years? The guidance counselor would say that or a teacher. Where do you want to be in five years, 10 years? I'm like, really? All I want to do is kiss the girl in English class. That's all I'm focused on the next 10 minutes, let alone the next 10 years. You can't, you can't ask me that. You can't ask a teenager that. So there are very few people who know where they want to go and what they want to do at that age. But what I would say is create a framework and that has to do with your values again. Create a framework that you can follow, all right? Plan your future, figure out what interests you. If there's, if there's a certain industry that interests you, not a specific job, yes, I wanna be a strategic account manager when I'm 22 and then by the time I'm 26, I wanna be married with three kids, I wanna to move to Alaska, raise a couple bears and, uh, and moose up there and then uh, use them for, for meat and then come back to Canada and sell the meat at the butcher shop. By uh, the time I'm 30, I'm gonna open up my own butcher shop. Like, what are you talking about? No one can go into that kind of weird detail, but that seems like a pretty cool life. Um, but listen, create a framework, right? What industry? Do you think having a family is important? Do you one day want a family? You know, I think you may be able to answer that. Do you want to live um, in Canada or do you feel like, or the United States or in Europe, wherever you're watching this from, do you want to live, you know, um, by your family? Is family important? Again, so creating a structure of values and planning your future just in big, broad clumps can kind of dissolve some of that anxiety so you have a bit of structure. Okay. Now when I say plan your future, so that's one way, right? Just huge chunks of, you know, within the next five years, this is something I value. This is something that interests me. This university is cool, right? This internship sounds awesome. And when I say plan your future, we can also say plan your routine as well in this tip. 
Routine is so important for anxiety because even just the day-to-day -day unknown can leave you feeling woozy doozy goozy, also known as anxiety. That's also what the kids are saying these days. Woozy goozy oozy is, um, you know, when you get up in the morning, you know what's coming next, all right? Planning your days by the hour can give you great relief and make you so efficient. And it's going to make you ready for the workplace too. I know a lot of you are in school, high school, uh, college, university, whatever. Planning your days like that is going to do you so many favors. It's going to make you unstoppable and efficient. It's a great habit to get into and create that work ethic for yourself. Bingo, bango, common anxiety, schlingo, schlango, creating great work ethic and uh, killing the competition when you enter the workforce. Now, number 10. The last but not least, I think this is number 10. Did I just say number nine? I'm not sure. I'm so in the present moment, I don't even remember the past. Uh, <laughs> number 10 is list your triggers. All right? Uh, triggers. I don't like the word trigger. List what makes you feel like shit. How about that one? So this goes to the symptom part about eating sour keys, but, you know, it also goes with planning the future. This is just the icing on the cake, the cherry on top of the butt. All right, so um, listing your triggers, meaning are there places that you avoid or are there places you should avoid? Better yet, are there people you should avoid? Now, avoidance is like what you don't want to do with anxiety. If you used to enjoy something and you had a bad experience, all right, you went to the bowling alley, all right, and you dropped the ball on your toe Everyone laughed at you. Everyone in the bowling alley was laughing at you, okay? And then this clown comes in from the kid's birthday party, brings in 30 kids from the birthday party. All the kids are laughing at you. You got so embarrassed, you pissed yourself in the bowling alley, all right? There's kids, adults, all right? Then some the clown throws a pie in your face. You're humiliated, all right? You're humiliated. You can't go to the bowling alley anymore. And you used to love bowling. You used to love it. You had your own ball. You had your own shoes. You had your own team. Your team's waiting for you every Sunday morning. You're skipping church to play bowling. To bowl. And anxiety and that fear of humiliation is keeping you from doing what you loved. That's a problem. That's a problem. So... When we talk about what your triggers are, you don't want to avoid what you used to love. In fact, you want to expose yourself to what you fear and get back into the game. But I'm talking about more like toxic people, right? Ones that don't support you. Things that aren't good for you. Alcohol for one, right? Is that a trigger? How do you feel, right? We talked about that. Refined sugar. How about, um, how about, uh, what was I going to say? How about a bee, ba Alcohol, coffee, right? Caffeine, right? What are your triggers for diet? What are your triggers with people? And what are your triggers um, with environments, right? Are you at a workplace that really doesn't value mental health? And I know you may not have an option to quit your job because they don't, you know, let you take a mental health day. One day they will. But what about environments? Are you forced to go to the club and you really don't like going to the club and it makes you anxious and you're with those people, those toxic people that go to the club and they really just are there to hook up with other folks and they're a walking STI, but you're with that group. Hey, I've been there, man. I've done that, man. And it wasn't good for my anxiety, all right? So I avoid things, but avoid things that literally aren't good for me. So recognize if you're avoiding something that you love because of anxiety or what you should avoid to help your anxiety, right? So there's a push-pull factor there, okay? So you have to realize what you should be more exposed to, which will inevitably, you know, it'll hurt your anxiety at the beginning, all right? It's going to be tough. Or uh, we're talking about toxic people and environments and foods, what you should be avoiding, all right? What your triggers are for that. So let's say, again, for coffee, um, how do you feel after drinking coffee? Anxious? You know, but you love the taste, switch to decaf, go to, you know, lower caf caffeinated teas. Here's another one, social media. How do you feel after you're on Facebook? All right? Take note of that. Take note of that. You felt okay. Now you're scrolling through your Instagram, seeing what everyone else is doing. Uh, everyone, you know, it's the highlight reel. 
How do you feel afterwards? That can be a trigger for some and you may not realize, you may not be mindful and self-aware that your mood kind of just took a couple couple of drops, right? You, you kind of went down the scale a bit, all right? So that's very important when pointing out your triggers. You want to avoid social media, right? Or do you want to use it less or do you want to use it differently, right? These are things that you need to write down and this is going to help you uh, long term, right? This is a long term solution to anxiety, creating a beautiful world for yourself. All right, think of the world as neutral. You're you're bringing meaning into your lives, and you're 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 seeing what each thing means to you. What do what do people drinking alcohol and me drinking alcohol and being in that scene? What does that mean for me if it's causing me anxiety? Right? I'm avoiding the bowling alley. All right, what does that mean for me? What do I need to do to get back in there? Would I be happier there eventually, or should I keep avoiding it? to avoid the clown in the pies, all right? This is what I'm talking about here is uh, know your triggers, right? Know what can help you, know what you should avoid, and know what you should go chase. So that was a long video, and thank you so much for, for staying uh, with me until the end. These were 10 tips. I really hope that you give each and every one of them a try, okay? Especially the ones that will help you long-term with setting values to ones that will help you short-term like dynamic meditation, all right, and exercise, okay? so. You know, this is from all personal experience from me and again of the hundreds and thousands and thousands of emails that I've received in five years. Um, these are the things that that people had done that had made a big difference. OK, I had testimonies from each of these things where people weren't exercising. They did a few push ups. They feel relief just in that moment, you know, and it's like anxiety. You want to calm down. But should you express yourself or do you want to, you know, do some meditation. That's all personalized. You can tweak these things to your own liking. But now you have 10 juicy babies in your mental health toolbox. We're all crazy babies, all right? We're always going to be crazy babies. But we have to control the crazy a little bit. And you can walk around with your toolbox now. And just the thought of you now having 10 more tools to fix 10 more problems, all right, is a good feeling. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you. Please don't forget to subscribe to Depression to Expression to see more videos about an honest dialogue about mental health. That's what we do here. Fearless expression, all right? I'm not holding back anything anymore. It's time to tell the truth about mental health and mental illness. It's time to tell you my thoughts and my thinking. So, uh... Yeah, if you want to uh, stay tuned for more, go for it. All of the links to my social media, Instagram, man, if you want to see me with my shirt off, that's the place to go, okay? Uh, please go to my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook group, um, subscribe to YouTube. There's all the playlists below, tons of goodies on the channel. You could spend days in self-improvement mode just watching the 400 vids that are on here, so... Thank you so much for watching again. This was 10 ways to deal with anxiety successfully and um, stay strong, everyone, and keep being you. Take care.